Welcome to the virtual Mkuku, Mkuku Wako Oluazi, the Mkuku of Education. Let's go. Very good afternoon and a warm welcome to the virtual Mkuku. As you can see, Baba, we've been upgraded, <laughs> upgraded to a super Mkuku. <laughs> Uh, we're at M Studios in Newtown, Newtown Junction. I just want to give a shout out to the guys who are helping us in production. Usia, Utumi, Utabang. And these guys claim that they can do everything. Sound, mm. film, edit. Uh, if you need your girlfriend to be babysat for a weekend. Oh, wow. Jeez. Oh, no, shit. Sorry. Uh, wrong, wrong service <laughs> offering. Sorry. Uh, but the guys are super dope. Uh, if you guys want to work with them, please contact M Studios. I want to send a shout out, and I spoke to this gentleman, I think two, three weeks ago, John Savage, because I know he's, he's a big part of the team that's, that's made, brought this into fruition. Shout out to Slim, man. Slim, I fucking love you, boy, and I can't wait to see out, you rise in the industry and with everything you're doing. But to see ya, Utumi no Tabang are hosting us today. Uh, we're not in Spread View, but we'll be back in Spread View soon at Vab Studios with Nabo Gift, Nabo Panzo, Nabo Cats, Nabo Cliff, Nabo Vus. Obviously, it's the pen and pen show. I don't care about the comments. <laughs> How you doing, bro? <laughs> I, why do we do that? One more time? Ah, 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 pressure. <laughs> you know what's going to happen? Like, if when this, this show bumps, when people bump into you, yeah. Literally, that's all they no, want. No, I mean, I'm, no, I'm not gonna. Hey, no, I'm not gonna. Uh, no, 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 no I've but been warning you that you need to take it yeah, easy. Yeah, you've been warning. And you're not listening. So the universe is going to make sure. No, no, that's 100% how it works. You know, okay. you, you, you keep tripping on the same stone until you realize the good tea. Shout out to the to Serious learned. Touch Rugby guys, man. We Shout love you guys. guys. Yeah, follow the guys on Instagram. Amazing group of gents. Um, <clears throat> I was reading comments. And <laughs> I hope we get to speak about the chat that we had on Hustler's Corner. Sure. And I'm reading comments. And yes, yes, people are negative, hey. Negative? Yo! This, so you read and you're people like, oh, are this, not is, negative. this is nice, this is amazing, this is great, this is... Yo, people say the most hurtful things. Oh, you mean they are jerks? Yo! There's jerks everywhere. Oh, I'm reading these things and I'm like, guys, we're trying. <laughs> like, we're really trying. And people are just, God, I can't believe this is bullshit. You guys don't know what the hell you're talking about. I was like, like, if, okay, disagree engage, sure. you know, let's have that communication, whatever the case may be. But in Jehuguti, yeah, and I think that your shoes are shit, like your dad. How? How? Oh, oh, guys, so... That's hurtful. That's, that's, that's mean. That's not nice. So... In Jehuguti, it's the coolest handshake. It is when not we the see coolest you handshake. guys, you know, high five, we're no. here, gay handshake. Give me zero, ma'am. <laughs> Uh, we love you guys, man. Virtual squatters, don't forget to click on the subscribe button. Mm. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you guys know that a new episode is up. Uh, please share. Please feel free to take clips of this shirt on your TikTok, on your Instagram. If there's something that maybe touched you, comment. As you heard, we read all the comments. We read the comments. If there's something dope, we'll respond. If there's something negative, look, I love constructive criticism. If you're just being an asshole, ah, I guess yeah, it's who no, you are I and it's fine. I don't want to engage. I, I don't comment on the on the negative shit. The low blows you know? and the yeah, people the low blows. Yeah, but if someone is disagreeing, then I'll engage. Sure. Because then we can, well, at least I can learn from where they disagree and how they view life. I, uh, I saw an amazing tweet and then I remixed it. Yeah. And it was something along the lines of, at school, they used to separate us in classes. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. trending. That was quite cool. Yeah, yeah. At that school, was they used cool. to separate us in classes. You know, there's the smart kids, there's the slow Anyana kids, and then there's obviously remedial class and kids with special learning mm. uh, needs. Um, on social media, we're all bunched together. Yeah. And it shows. Yeah. And sometimes you see these trolls on Twitter and those things. Yeah. And you like, a person can't be that thick. Mm. And you're only saying this because the space you've been moving in, you've maybe been around smart people or logical people or whatever. Mm. Um, and just 
a lot of really good people on, especially Twitter, because Twitter can be very negative. Mm. A lot of good people have left Twitter because they say it's a negative space. It affects the, their mental the, health. The worst thing, because for me, I, I remember with my Facebook and I started doing this. I think I learned this from you. Because you just delete someone's comments. So you'll yeah. post yourself in your Remove favorite Remove the things, you know. And before, when someone says, oh, that's a shit t-shirt, uh, you'd want to, no. Uh, and then you have you a don't back understand and forth. art. And then you realize, no, man, let me just delete your comments. Sure. You know, and if you look on, on Instagram... Like you'll click on a person, you realize realize they've got zero followers, sure. zero posts, zero everything. Don't even have a profile picture. And no profile, and you're like, this is a, an actual troll. Like, yeah. why would I engage with this person? Let me just block, you sure. know. So it's it's that. But outside of that, man, you're grand, you're good, you're good, you know. On on Twitter, a lot of good people have left Twitter because it's an unhealthy space. A lot of people have been led, have been pushed to depression. Sadly, some suicide because of how noisy social media is. From my side, if social media is getting too noisy, if it's too negative. The responsibility is on you to switch your phone off, to mm. maybe delete the app, to take a break, you know. And a lot of people have left, and you'll find that, let's say, uh, I've just hit 30,000 followers on Twitter. Thank you to everyone who follows me on Twitter. You'll find of the 30,000 people, there's maybe 1,000 horrible people who hate me. They're following me just to be negative. And it's not fair on the 29,000 people for me to leave Twitter. So what I've, I've started doing, it's hard work. Unblock it, because yeah. No, Elon Musk is my boy. Shout out to Elon. What's up, homie? You know? So what I've, what I've done on Twitter is I do this really, really hard thing of I, I block people that I see have got no profile picture, yeah. constantly coming at me sideways, etc. Mm. Yes, people are like, oh, you don't like people that are different. Nah, I'm, I'm happy with people that are different. Mm. Happy with people that debate and disagree with me. But engage, yeah, people yeah. that come sideways, yeah. I, I don't need you in my space because I don't want to be one of the people that ends up leaving Twitter because of that type of thing. The cuckoo of education. So what, what I hate the most on Twitter is that thing of being anonymous. Sure. You know, um, if you're going to say smack about my T-shirt, be, be a man about it and be it. You're going to me, coming to me straight. So I can also then dig around and say, well, those shoes also don't match your outfit. Be a you human know? being. But if you're going to be a troll, you know, you've created this burner account mm -hmm. just to be talking shit. I, I can't, dog. Elon can't, Musk is doing this really cool thing. And he said it before he took over Twitter. And for those of you who don't know, Elon Musk has got this master plan for Twitter where he wants as many of us as possible to get verified. It's costing money, which initially got criticized for, mm. but then Facebook started doing it, Instagram yeah, started doing thing, it, yeah. chat GPT is now $20 a month. But part of the reason he wanted to verify was number one, he wanted to get rid of trolls and mm. bots. Number two, because he's one of the guys that built PayPal, he wants to, now that you're human, mm. now that we've got your information, you'll be able to start transacting on Twitter, mm. you know, and sending money and maybe even turn Twitter into like some kind of a bank account. And now for like people- like a WeChat type of thing. WeChat has done that, and mm. he literally said this on a platform that WeChat is probably the greatest social media platform on, in the planet, but South Africans aren't really plugged in. It's big in China. Um, and a lot of people, like my kids and their mom in China now, they use WeChat to pay, to get into spaces, to book tickets. And he was saying, just copy WeChat and put it on Twitter. Mm. And hopefully over time, we'll be able to transact, make money, uh, and what he's doing now, if you have a verified account, because there's ads on Twitter, which they've invested time in now, um, they're going to be sharing, like TikTok is doing. Uh, I think YouTube just launched this in February, where they've got these funds. And if there's ads and you do shorts or you do TikTok videos, they're going to be sharing that with you. So Elon Musk is going to be doing that on Twitter. So for people that create content on mm. Twitter, because there's going to be ads in the comment, you're going to be getting some of the money. Oh, that's amazing. Which I think is pretty dope. But what's important is take care of your mental health. If social media is getting too much, switch, block, delete, mm. unfollow, curate your social media so that it's positive. It's, it's crazy if you look at the, the type of following or the, the, what people choose to follow. Yeah. You know? um, and it's cutting this thing. It's a matter of you see people who are depressed based on failing to keep up with the. Sure. You know, so you are following your, let's say when you are not privileged enough to have a job and you're unemployed yeah. and you're following your boys who are moving in certain spaces and are growing. And if that's not motivating you, don't follow them, you know, because I feel it makes like you feel fun. It makes you feel lesser. And it, it, it could be jealousy, but it, it's affecting it, you mentally. Be, yeah, be that as it may. Let's say you're jealous because, okay, Pinson was at gym at 5 a.m. Sure. And if that is making you feel less than. 
find spaces where you can feel good about yourself. You mm. can grow, you know, at least start the day on a positive note. Sure. Rather than waking up, seeing certain people at gym and that breaks your spirit and you're like, ah, fuck it. This guy's such a cunt. You know, maybe follow some comedians. Wake up in the morning, watch something that makes you laugh. Feel good about yourself. Attack the day. Shout out to Kevin Hart and The Rock. They have some of the most positive content <clears throat> online. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've made sure, would see like, with my social media, like, if you are... Um, popping bottles, mm. spinning cars, twerking, showing booty, I unfollow that, mm. you know. So a lot of it is comedy, a lot of it is that being uh, mentally stimulating motivational type of... Content, motivate, motivational content, philosophy. Content, you know, so a lot of it is just trying to align my diet, mm. you know, because I tried that thing of waking up and not going on social media, yeah. then I failed. Sure. So I was like, okay, shop. If I'm going to start my day off with social media, then make sure, would see, it's at least a diet that is going to grow me yeah. and make me a better person. You said you're doing well. Are you eating well, exercising outside of your knee? How are the boys? Um, the boys are phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, the boys are great. We've got dads and lads this weekend. Uh, so that is essentially for those that don't know, it's an opportunity that the school creates where fathers, fathers being uncles, grandfathers, all the brothers, whatever the case may be, can go and do an activity. So we're going hiking. Sure. Uh, and I'm That's taking, nice. yeah, I'm taking the number two and number one. And we're going, we're leaving on Friday, coming back on Sunday. Zino, no Zita. Zino Zita, yeah. Okay, so Undima staying behind. No, no, Undima, Undima must stay behind. With these you know. fat bova cheese. Yeah. So we're doing river rafting, we're doing mudslides. It's cool, man. It's just a chance where fathers can then get to bond with. The reason why I'm doing this is because there are mothers there, okay. you know. Um, I reserve my opinion on that, you know. But it's an opportunity for fathers to bond with their sons. And to know. bond with each other. And it's to also bond nice to see yeah, yeah, yeah. the other fathers mm. of the kids. And my boys, my rugby boys are playing on Saturday. Good luck. So I'm going to wake up early, drive back. Who are they playing? They play against Parktown. Parktown boys. Parktown boys. St. Stithians versus Parktown it's boys. Good one. luck, boys. So we had our first practice on Monday. Sure. We had our first practice on Monday and our first game on Saturday. So Kabanga, the Tight. boys are going to be ready. Lapi Parktown has been practicing for the past like six months, you know. So it's going to be crazy. Um, That's but tough, boys win. character Yeah, so I'm going to wake up Xeni With the boys come Rugby And then from there Go sure. back to the dads and lads You saved the kid's life last year I saved the child's life And I fucked up my phone Okay So I had a really amazing phone So we're chilling with the dads and We don't want to hear about the phone We want to hear about I'm, the I'm life I'm tell you about my phone It was an amazing phone It was a top-notch phone I had to save a couple of You know Paychecks for that phone So we're sitting with some dads having beers. The boys are swimming at the what, pool. What was happening? So we had dads, dads and lads. We had dads last and lads. Year. Yeah. 2022. I'm hoping when I get back there, there's like a statue of me or something. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> so anyway, you, you know when you, uh, like, you, as a dad, you have a superpower. You mm. can start, you see your peripheral vision is always working. Sure. Regardless whether you're doping, chatting, you when know. When you're a dad. When you're, when you're a parent. I disagree, but... I okay. think if you're an intentional parent, maybe you played sports and you've just, you're aware of your surroundings. Some people don't have that. I had a good friend. Well, I had. I have a good friend of mine, Upigo. You know? yeah. So Upigo. Um, oh, Upigo Chainga. Yeah, amazing. Shout out to the Chainga brothers. Oh, Chainga brothers. With Dubak, with the older brothers. So Upigo's just had a beautiful daughter, you know, two months old. You know. Congrats, Pigo. Congrats, congrats, To you congrats, and Umama. Brother. Congrats, bro. Um, and Upigo was talking about how his senses are heightened. You know, so he was saying, for example, at night, when he hears the first... Mm, <laughs> you know, he, these motherfuckers. he anticipates, if I don't wake up now and engage, I'm going to wake up just a couple of seconds too late and now the baby's crying. Yeah. And once the baby's crying, that's a different story. So it's all those things that you didn't have before. Yeah. Now all of a sudden that little extra sound, you're up. Sure. You know, so again, when you're with a lot of boys in a swimming pool, yeah. you know, as much as we're enjoying ourselves and we're laughing, but we're also very aware with this little, sure. and the boys are pushing each other and they're throwing each other and then this one boy gets pushed in. You know, mm. like all the other boys, but then he stays under, and I'm, and like I'm waiting for him to come up while we're having conversations, and he's not coming up, and I'm waiting, and I'm going, hi man, so I run to the pool, sure. and Intuana's at the bottom of the pool, and he's looking up, jeez, look at him, his eyes are open at the bottom of the pool, he's looking at me, ne, I chuck my beer and I jump. Grr. Pull the boy out. Ndanga just he stands there. And, you, and then he just cries. He hails. Ah, you yeah. know. And he's hailing and he's hailing. And his father grabs him. Lapo, I mean, I've got my wallet here. I've got my phone here. Hey, son. Luckily, I'm broke, so there's no cash. Just cut. But there's a phone. There's a phone. 
So then I take out my phone and my phone is working. Perfect. No problem. Yeah. Oh, the phone is uh, uh, just for, you know, I put it in rice. They say I must put it in yeah. rice. But like it's working, you know. So I put it in rice. I leave it there. You know, um, I check after like six hours or whatever. Switch it on. Still working. Sure. It's fine. Um, use it. Call. And then get back to Joburg. And when I get back to Joburg on, on that Monday, there's a, a little line at the bottom. Hey, like That's the how it smallest starts. line. And I'm like, what's this line about? You know, mm. okay, shop. Literally about two, three hours later, now it's a thick line. Mm. So I switch it off, I put it in rice again on Monday. Sure. I leave it there. Tuesday, switch it on, half my screen is black. Hey, sir. I run to the Pakistanis. Danga, here's my Sh phone. Shout out to illegal immigrants. Shout <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The, those ones were not illegal. They had a registered company, registered sure. business. <laughs> I go, the brother looks in, he's like, no, it's over. I was like, no, but the whole, he's like, it's over. Jeez. He's like, I can get you another screen. It's going to cost you, just for this screen, it's going to cost you 3K. You saved the kid's life. Fuck the kid. We, uh, you can't say that. Here's a fit. Well done. The, okay. I was oh, like, no, shout I, out. I've never seen that kid or his dad ever since. And if I saw you, boy, I will <laughs> chuck it. you in that pool. I'm putting you in that pool. And I'm going to say, no, buddy, I need a phone. Do something. Yes, it's been a year, but I still have that phone that's not switching on. Not, not all superheroes wear capes, man. And, and yeah, anyone no. who's kind of uh, saved someone's life, anyone who's seen a woman in trouble and yeah. intervened. And I know a lot of people these days are funny about intervening when a couple is fighting because there was a generations act, I don't know if you come who was killed trying to help a couple that was fighting. And other people, you help, you get beaten up or you get yeah. stabbed and then next week they back together. But for those people who, are, who help other people, thank you so much, man. We appreciate you. Um, Last week or during the week, there was a very, very bad accident uh, in Durban on the M41 near mm. Mshanga, where a truck, apparently the brakes failed. The truck literally steamrolled into 45 to 47 vehicles, mm. 35 people critically injured, uh, uh, 45, 45 to 47 vehicles, 35 people injured, mm. three critically injured, of which one of them was a pregnant woman who had to be helicoptered out. Mm. And we want to say shout out to the paramedic, paramedics, to the cops, traffic officers that are on the scene, and everyone else who was, who was helping, you know. We just come from the tragedy that happened in Boxburg with the, a, a truck that exploded, and the people that died there, those of you who saw the tragic footage that came out there. Mm -hmm. um, I hope no one has passed on. I haven't seen the latest results. I hope the people that are injured recover uh, well and soon. I hope insurance companies don't give a hassle. Uh, I hope the road accident fund doesn't give problems. Um, but yeah, man, our, our hearts and prayers are with you and your families and, um, you know, you're minding your business, you're, you're obeying the mm. traffic laws, you pay your fines, you're a positive person and then next thing, out of nowhere, a, a oh. truck and the driver last I checked fled the scene um, and has not been found. But sometimes in those situations like Vele Kambum owned. For the driver. For the driver. They panic. They panic, yeah. their, their brain switches off and then they just chuck, yeah. you know, so... Let, let, let's hope that he's okay sure. uh, and he comes back and explains exactly what happened because if it is faulty breaks, then it, it's not his fault. Sure. You know, it's the um, owner, the maintenance, whatever. The maintenance, you know, and we do know that sometimes a car just decides to become a car and is, things happen out sure. of your control. Es especially so. when the weather's been bad because the weather yeah. was bad in, in Johannesburg, very bad rain. Yeah, very bad And rain. people need to be very uh, sensitive and drive slow and those good things. Why, why, why do people switch off when the weather's bad? When they drive, like all of a sudden, Abantu are not driving normal. Abantu decide to overtake last minute or they decide to drive faster than they normally do when it's raining. I, I can't explain. I can't explain why when it's nighttime, when the we weather's bad, why people don't use what we call common sense. But maybe yeah. it's what I was saying to you that your instinct may yeah. be unique and maybe for us that being cognizant of it's raining hard let me drive let slower. me drive slower let me put yeah. my lights on let me keep a safe following yeah, distance yeah. i don't know but we just have to keep reminding people when it's raining slow down they, there's unless you're rushing to an emergency because someone mm, is dying mm. someone is sick sure but outside of that there's no reason to be speeding 
to be on someone's bum in mm. traffic. It is no, you are going to cause an accident. Just take it easy. I wanted to say, um, this is going to take a step back. Sorry, this is bothering sure. me. So I remember when he's in varsity, ne? <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. You spoke about intervening in a relationship, a little yeah. scaffold. And I remember it was just happened outside the local watering hole, right in Parrot. In and Grahamstown. In Grahamstown. Ro- by roads. Yeah. yeah. And this couple is arguing and is arguing. So this one guy goes in between them and grabs Umchita. Don't fucking shout at her. Yeah. <laughs> Can the girl not I'm pull? not laughing. The girl pulls this guy that's intervening yeah. to assist. <laughs> Get the F out of you. Don't know what's happening here. Da, da, da. Umchita. Obviously, you know the rat, we're all at the top. So now we obviously we're laughing. We shouldn't have laughed, but it Should is what not it is. have laughed. And because now the Tox- hero toxic femininity. And now the hero is like this. Now the hero is chilling like he so, you know, and they back and shouting at, us, sure. at each other. Like nothing. And I'm going, yo, I sometimes a carry speech. Yeah, I'm in the wrong in time. I'm in the wrong time. Sorry, man. I just, yeah. Let me let me not uh, take you Toxic too femininity. Yeah. Ladies, be very careful when people are trying to help you, including your siblings, yeah. your cousins, your father. Ujahe, he slapped you. Now you rush to your dad. Your dad wants to hurt the guy or your siblings want to hurt the guy. Now you've forgiven him. What there's, are your siblings there's, and your parents meant? To, that means they're writing you off. The next time when you're in the hospital, they won't be there. They'll be like, no, but I, when it's trial, I got So as women also, maybe in a timing when people are trying to help you and be like, should I tell people? And maybe this is one of the things, sorry, that actually perpetuates what we call gender-based violence, violence against women, that some women know Sia Chola, and if I go tell people, they might hate you, and if yeah. we forgive each other, they might cancel me. So some women maybe keep certain things for too to long. Yeah. So just even a timing and... I'm, I'm you know, clear, but there was a person, a female person that you've interviewed on your show. Not going to say much, but you're this person can be toxic, eh? They, that person so, shall so, remain so, so nameless. Uh, <laughs> part of the frustration <laughs> we have in the country now is... Um, well done on that interview. The ANC. I was, I was like, it was like you were wrestling the bulls. What's that thing called when they go with the, with the red... Oh, the bull. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lungelo, land this plane, land this Toxic plane. Toxic masculinity. Land this plane. <laughs> Toxic masculinity. Because at any moment, you could have just... <laughs> so we have many issues with the ANC-led government, and, and part of them have oh. been the destruction of state-owned enterprises. Sure. Um, where that is intentional, because they want to privatize and sell these things off to their friends in the private sector who probably mm. fund the ANC, or because uh, they want to own these things themselves. Mm. I mean, you look at something like ESCOM. If ESCOM gets privatized or if independent power producers end up becoming big, Cyril Ramaphosa's brother-in-law, Patrice Mutsipe, mm. becomes richer mm. because he's got IPP licenses. Mm. Um, or it could be that they're just incompetent and mm. they don't know what they're doing. Mm. And they're greedy and they... But Transnet is one of the companies that is really in a, in a bad space in mm. a country, which is... Our railway system, our ports, our harbors. Figil Mbalula was the, the Minister of Transport, and then mm. he left. He's now left cabinet, and maybe I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, but Glencore, which works with Cyril at Shanduga, um, s- supplying coal to ESCOM, mm. and they also, under Astron Energy, supply diesel to ESCOM when there's mm. load shedding. They've put their hand up to say, look, Transnet probably needs some private sector intervention, and <laughs> we're willing to help. We're the happy people. So... Uh, the reason we've got trucks, so mm. many trucks on the road, destroying the roads, creating unnecessary traffic. You're trying to overtake, but you can't because of these trucks. Um, so many accidents, people dying, truck drivers that are under pressure and have to speed and get to certain places at a certain time. Mm. Truck drivers that don't get to sleep or don't mm. get adequate mm. sleep. Mm. Truck drivers that are involved in stealing of diesel and, mm. and these mm. funny mm. things. Um, a big part of it is because of the dysfunction and the greed of our po- political elite. Mm. We had a really great railway system, and our railway system is meant to move our coal, our chrome, our platinum, some of our goods to the harbors in Richards Bay, Durban, parts of East London, PE, Cape Town, but they've mm. been destroyed. And hopefully when we get better leadership, whether it's within the ANC or other people, mm. please can we revive our railway networks. Yeah. A lot of our political cold, elites man. have got trucks, man. Especially in Pumalanga, like Anjiswa Konamalash, especially in the Northwest with Platinum. Mm. And it's just greed. And we now have to struggle with trucks on the road. And you have situations so, like what's happening now so, so with people u- getting u- hurt. U- u- Cyril is, is what to Patrice? 
brother in law. Jesus. That's crazy. Inus, inus kuiza, aksus, usbali. Usbali. Have you been here? With, 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 without going too much of uh, into the gossip, and have, you heard, have, as well. have, have you heard about to Patrice and um, ah, and gossip? But have you heard that? Did you hear that, boy? I actually didn't want to speak about this. this no, 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 no. What's what's her name? No, it's Katrina Kotanke. Yeah, isn't she married? She was Dineo, Dineo Mashaba, Dini, Dini on uh, generations. No, I have no idea. So, so I I'm not a fan of peddling. Yeah, yeah. Gossip. So yeah, let's 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 move away and from gossip. And if ever we are gonna touch on no, gossip no, like no, now no no no, no, no kule, up, kule. Yeah. if we are going to touch on gossip for me i'm happy to talk gossip if there's an educational element yeah not just for the sake of oh, yeah. Yeah. so it's not the first time right ukatle hotanke has got a child and no one knows who the father of the child is yeah and there've been rumors Patrismos. there've been rumors in the past yeah. that it's patrice mutsipe's child no one has ever verified she's never said it he's never said it they've also never denied it and they don't need to deny it sure and apparently she's pregnant again, again and the rumors are it's Patrice's child again yeah. um if there is going to be an educational spin to this it's we are all human and whether it's a Patrice a Barack Obama a Nelson Mandela we are human so if Patrice it comes out later he's got children on the side it's because he's a human he's yeah. a flawed man like the rest of us if Katlejo Danke has got kids with a Patrice she's a human my, like my, the rest of my, us my whole thing is that there's a narrative out there men yeah. are trash you know all this case or whatever the yeah one okay shop men are trash men are dogs but if you are a married woman you married with your husband sure and you're going out to get impregnated by another married man sure twice while no baby in shatile that we we have to allegedly open, allegedly i also sorry. don't i also don't yeah. think she's let, married but i'm not let, sure let, let, let's remove them for now just as an example as an example uh, hypothetically you know, example we, a married we, woman we need to also open up these conversations around as you're talking about toxic femininity yeah. and a hashtag women are trash you know because when guys are cheating yeah. we're not sleeping with each other you know sure so we are cheating with females yeah you know so a lot of our sisters out there as kids are sleeping with married men yeah you know they can also say no they can take the moral high gr uh, ground and go no you married i can see the ring let me be off yeah. you know but if we go to certain clubs we're going to be seeing or see sitting with men who are wearing rings and is that your husband no you know so there's also that that we also there's need a to... deeper there's a deeper conversation so one of them is accountability yeah uh, so i don't like women are trash because i don't believe the in the men are trash yeah, movement are trash, i think yeah. understanding where they come from and the intention i think they've caused more harm Mm. then good and they didn't highlight what was meant to be highlighted and they caused unnecessary friction between mm. good people um because even with the gbv thing they they it's almost like females hijacked that because it's meant to be gender based violence now it's essentially gbv is an umbrella term for violence against women it was never meant to be gender based yeah it was always meant to be violence against women. violence against women sure. and children mm. um but then someone came up with this term of gender based violence which now if a man gets beaten up with a woman they're like how oh, but is this not gbv no and no one cares, cares. and no yeah. one cares because it wasn't meant to be that gotcha. even when women are beating and killing children which has happened in this country mm. no one cares no one calls that gbv so yeah. uh, i hate those terms like xenophobia and homophobia of which a phobia is a fear mm. it's it's a misnomer yeah um it, it's layered women need to take accountability for some of the wrongs but part of it is we now live in a western society where it's bad to be a polygamist it's mm. frowned upon rather sure you know ah he's got many wives and what mm. what but from a western perspective a lot of the men who are i'm i'm with one wife i'm not mm. a polygamist but he's got a mistress yes and he's sleeping with his secretary yeah so uh, what that means is we need to have conversations around different relationship dynamics mm. and some of these women that are sleeping with i'm not speaking about the married women mm. some of these women that sleep with married men it's because naturally a woman wants to be with the best man that can caught her attention. Mm. The fact that he's married in the past mm. with polygamy is like, oh, okay, I'm willing to be your second, third wife. Mm. Today, because we're dealing with, no, he's married. It's like, well, I guess I'll be his mistress, mm. kind mm. of. And we need to have conversations around, in my opinion, normalizing different types of relationship. Mm. Um, and if there's going to be couples that are open to, because there's things called swinging and stuff, mm -hmm. open relationships, which mm. Will Smith and Jada were accused of, If we're going to have stuff like that then if this married woman and her married husband are like look 
if you want to have a we good time, do it. The of, then yeah. sure, and it's yeah. their prerogative, and yeah. we must speak about it. Yeah. So that if a married well, they, man, they also don't have to explain it to us. They don't. They don't have to explain anything. it to us, but yeah. within their stakeholders, because yeah, fact. Part of the problem now is we had a situation now again gossip. We had a situation with two umbale entle mlojo, yeah. where she had complained about black coffee and and cheating and those things. And then it came out with a woman saying, but Umbale is sleeping with my husband. Sure. And I've told her to back off. And, and it, it seems like hypocrisy. And mm. yes, you, you don't have to explain anything to us. But if you're expecting us to be sensitive and empathize with certain situations, yeah. if you are going to be part of the problem elsewhere, we also have to sympathize with someone else. Like, let's have that chat. But I'm, I'm, are, I'm happy are, to... Are people ready for that chat? Ah, we can chat about it, man. Anyways, Transnet, <laughs> Let's chat about a chat. Um touched on something now where uh, the cabinet reshuffle and Chris Rock. Uh, I'm not going to speak much about it. You guys can go to Penuel, the black pen. I did a short video there speaking, touching on the cabinet reshuffle. Mm. I'm sure other people have done a better job, but Cyril Ramaphosa has announced a new cabinet. Lindio Esisulu, who's been a minister since Mandela, is out. She was minister of tourism. Patricia DeLille is in. Fihil Mbalula is out. He was uh, minister of transport. Mm. Um, he's now going to be focusing on being the Secretary General of the ANC. We've got a new ministry, Minister of Electricity, Josie and Sosputla. Ramukhopa is the minister there. Nkosa um, Zanajamini Zuma moves from Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs to being the Minister of Youth at age 74. Wow. Youth, youth, women, and, and people. <laughs> I, I think it's youth, women, children, and people with disabilities, <laughs> uh, which some people consider a demotion. Um, which are the other ones? There's a, there's a lady that's coming uh, to the Minister of Transport mm. Portfolio, Yafil Mbalula. Uh, Paul Mashatile has officially been announced as mm. the Deputy President of the country. Uh, Minister of the Presidency, I know Kumbedzo Chabeni is, is now there. But yeah, go pen you all the black pen. Um, I did a short video just highlighting, but you guys can go and research these things. But mm. got new ministers, they're not going to be serving for long. Don't Over hold your breath. Overall, how do you feel about it? Number one, don't hold your breath. Mm. We've got elections next year. So, Babambi, Babambi position. But Upi. But Upi, and you tie Siso Bambanje. As if you are my elections, just to go to the corner, some body. You know, so don't expect much from them because also with ANC caters, yeah. there's going to be a big push for campaigning towards the end of this year and, and, and next year. So, don't expect much. Mm. We just hope they'll stabilize certain things. Everyone's eyes are going to be on Usputla mm. uh, with what happens with ESCOM and, and those kind of things. I mean, I had, we had four hours load shedding from four to eight last night. Mm. As soon as the power came back, five minutes later, we tripped again. And as we're speaking now, uh, we don't have power in my area. Mm. And because of power outages in places like Auckland Park and Melville, there was no power. So mm. all eyes are going to be on him. I'm annoyed with Cyril who claimed he was sick last week. And then next thing he was seen at a Ankole Cattle dinner with some of his Ugandan friends that were there. Um, I continue to say, I think Cyril takes this country for a boost. Um, and I think some people are starting to see that that were his fans before. Outside of that, my expectations are low to non-existent. Next year's um, gonna be so interesting though. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I have I'm no not, idea. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not I, sure. As I'm asking to who am I gonna vote for? As I, I, I have no idea. Like, but I, when I'm, you I'm vote, not, I'm are not you motivated. Change? I, I are you know. voting because you're voting for change? Or are you voting just to be I'm, like, hey, I'm, I'm, I de I'm demotivated in every way. Yeah. Like, to a point where I'm like, do I even wake up and go to the polls? You know? Sure. You know? And I think I'm not alone in that. You're you know? not, you're not. So, if you look at the youth vote, a lot of young people don't vote, don't register. But I'm, I'm, I would assume that the ruling party is excited. You know, if the youth is not voting for any change, yeah. chances are... You know, the ones that will be at the polls, whatever the case, will, will keep things how they are. Do the youth want change? Do we, we, assume, know, we assume do, because of Twitter. Do we, know what, do we know what change looks like? Do we know what change looks like? Because you're young, you're unemployed, you're earning 350. Yeah. You're young, you're at school, you're on NSFAS. Yeah. You're young, you, your parents live in an RTP. Sure. You get free health care. Yeah. You went to a no-fee school and you were fed by this supposed horrific ANC government. Mm. So and what does change look like? And yeah. do the youth really want change? Maybe part of the reason is the youth that are not voting are like, I appreciate the ANC's benefits. Mm. So mm. I'm not going to vote against them because I like what I get from them. 
But I don't like them. And for that reason, I won't vote. I mean, but, but I even, appreciate but, but what but they even do. Even when I'm engaging with people and they'll say, Guti, they'll vote for this party or that party. Or like, oh, I'll vote EFF. And then I say, okay, let's unpack what that will look like. No one reads manifestos. Nothing. So now when they say they'll vote for EFF and then you start challenging them on certain things, yeah. then they're like, oh, I didn't know what the EFF stands for this. Or I didn't know that the DA stands for that. Then you're like, so, sure. you know, so you're going to vote for the same cabinet in a different color, you sure. know, essentially. So give me, it just becomes that. That's why I'm saying there's a lot of frustration here, you know, around Buy from those pick things. and pay, buy from Woolies, buy from ShopRite. It's same the same thing. investors. It's the same thing. Same investors, you know, same stakeholders. I hear you. So uh, speak about Will Smith and Jada. So Will Smith slapped the shit out of uh, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock yeah. at the Oscars. And a Chris Rock special has come out now on Netflix. Yeah. Where yeah. he is s- slapping the shit out of Will Smith verbally. Yeah. Of course, metaphorically, <laughs> figuratively. Yeah. And uh, Chris Rock is going hard, man, on uh, everyone who bashed Will Smith. Everyone that was calling him a bitch. Everyone mm. was calling Jada Pinkett names. Mm. And... Mixed emotions and mixed mm. reception. A lot of people are like, good on Chris Rock. Mm. Will Smith and his wife opened themselves up to this. A mm. lot of people are not happy. They're like, ah, Chris, we expect you to be the bigger guy. This is not it and this is not right. And maybe you deserve the slap. It, when, as it, when, when I watched that, ne, initially I was Have like... you watched the special or just the clip? I didn't watch the special. I okay. saw a little bit of the clip and I remember going back to watching when Will Smith slapped Chris sure. Rock. And I remember initially I was obviously angry on Chris Rock's side, how do you let a person do this to you, la, 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 la. Then you end up taking a, a step back, you know, and you look at where we are in terms of mental health, you look at where we are in terms of just it's society and the pressures that we have. Mm. And I'm thinking, Guti, you're Will Smith. Yeah. you nominated for an Oscar. You are a multi-millionaire. You are the face of so many things. You're a role model. You're, you're an icon. You're, you're a great an icon. father. Your children are amazing. What must be going through your mind what broke from a mental health point for you to stand up, walk 20 meters that way? In front of the whole world. In front of the entire world, live television, mm. to another superstar. Yeah. To another superstar who was making a joke. And you know he's a comedian and he makes jokes about everyone. Sure. And it wasn't even a personal joke. He was linking it to something else. For you to go and physically assault him. Yeah. Like, what is going on? Like, to a point where I was like, Lumchita is going to hang himself. Because clearly what was happening in his life was just beyond and he broke. Sure. You know, so I took a step back and I was like, Ah, Lumchita, Lona, there's nothing here. I get all right. No, I get all right. It took him him about three months to to release an apology video. But it's it's almost like when people were... were, were, um, smashing Kanye, ne? Mm. And I'm like, Kanye literally went publicly on platform saying, I'm off my meds. Sure, he literally right. said, I am off medication sure. for um dry dry. Sure. And people are still have the audacity to take shots at a person who is mentally ill. But why is he not on his meds? Because um like, dry dry. I hear you, but, <laughs> you I'm saying, but I'm saying, in that conversation, it's like, you, you can't say you off your meds and say dumb shit and expect us to be okay as That's well. fine. I'm yeah. saying, Wuti, but the I people what, in his circle, point. that's when we take you to a rehab center. Sure. Or people intervene aggressively in your circle. You know, Which Kim but, Kardashian and her mom did. And yeah, Kanye, to this day, feels they were wrong. You, um, you now must take the opinion of Mund who's off his meds. Mm-hmm. It's almost like seeing a person who's walking around around the city center, Esmazi, Wuti's got mental issues, sure. you know, and wanting them to reason in a like logical, a rational person. way. Sometimes we must also need to take you a step You're convinced that Will Smith is not mentally okay? I'm convinced that Will Smith is not mentally okay. Since maybe the August Alcina thing? Yeah. I think, I think that broke him. I, I think they, he was already going on his own spiral, looking at yeah. his family dynamics, looking at that red table and how Jada was unpacking um, the, the family's dirty laundry, yeah. um, looking at how Willow was talking about her father and the family dynamics, looking at just that movement, and then you have that August thing that happened, I think yeah. that broke him. I think when that broke him, from there, it was just a downward spiral. Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, and soon thereafter, Jada Pinkett was recorded as saying she doesn't need anyone to protect her. Yeah. U- Whereas U- Will Smith U- was trying to defend his wife's honor. She U- was kind of like, I don't need, I don't U- need U- a, a person U- to do Jada, that for me. Jada, in my opinion, from the little that I've seen on media, is an absolute psychopath. 
psychopath, a sociopath, however you want to break it down. Based on what? Based on how she has presented herself to the world. So I've seen a lot of toxic, extremely toxic females that present this ideal to the world. They soft spoken. Oh, little old me, I would never. But you know, Woody, their words are like venom. Yeah. You know, they are the, you know, snakes slither in silence, you know, and they are so venomous in how they move, mm. you know, like a, a, a sociopath, Guti, strategically putting Usia in a way where the, the truck was, will hit him before me. And watching how Ujeda has aligned and moved Will into the line of fire when it suits her and how she's made sure, Guti, she, oh, let's play a Tupac track here. Let's move August here, let's and watching her, I'm going. This person is disgusting. You think she's toxic to Will? I think I think toxic is an understatement. I I think lo lo lo, lo sisi lo na lo tupac. I think oh. it's, no, obviously, but I'm just saying she's so extreme in. Like I watched some of her red table talk. I was like, don't say that. Hmm. Don't say that. like. Unless the person is here and they can defend themselves, you know, those things are isn't that belong to the family. Mm. You know, you can't just be airing out things. Even sure. when they spoke with Will and they spoke about the, uh, what's it, entanglement, whatever they were saying. Entanglement with August, yeah. We, we saw as viewers with this guy's breaking, we could see the tears, we could see the emotion. Yeah. That's when you, you call cut. Baby, are you okay? What's happening? And it's probably pre-recorded, so they, they you know, didn't have to upload you, it. You, you, and sometimes even you can see what you're like, sure. you know what, I choose not to load this because sure. this is breaking my man. I can see what's happening to the family unit. I can see how this could potentially play. Show this, and I'm watching this do lady. You, do you think there's a chance from your perspective that she's also not mentally okay? Maybe she's also had her own pains and, and struggles and maybe she struggled with some, maybe Will has done some things that she's protecting him. Maybe, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe losing Tupac did something to her of which they've never said they were together, but she mm. said he was like a brother. Mm. Uh, maybe she's got her own things as yeah, well. Yeah, same thing as uh, H Hannibal Lecter's also got his own things, you know, so... So realizing this and understanding that Chris Rock is kind of intelligent, mm. do you not think Chris Rock should have been like, look, maybe Umchi Dayeko, okay, maybe I shouldn't do a special bashing him even further? I, I, I think Chris Rock is angry. Of course. And of rightfully course he's so. Angry. So for me... Just because the guy who's mentally He chose not to not balanced. lay charges, but now yeah. he's doing this. Yeah, because just because the guy I know is mentally disturbed, is walking around eating, uh, chewing gum that he's picking up the, off the ground. If he decides to slap me, yeah. I'm going to literally choke slam him. I'm not going to just let it go because sure. he's mentally not okay. Now I'm also human. And I think he just needed to let it out there, mm. especially because we labeled oh, Chris Rock a bitch. For you know, not reacting. For not responding to getting assaulted. You know, like that. So, like, is, okay. is it not opportunistic in trying to milk what happened financially? Because now that it's the special, that's going to be the talk of the special. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's the case. Sure. You know, maybe he's also trying to milk that, and um, he has all right to. You sure. know, because again, I'm shy. You know, so if you can get any bit of benefit from there, yeah. you know, then go for it. I'm, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. You know, um, I just think that he should have as well walked back, just tackled him from the back or something. I don't know, my sub, you know, I would have just crip. Like that. Like that. Like that. Like that. You've got, you've got a lot to lose. And you know, as you get bigger, you have to move. But, but I, I feel that the world, my world at least, would have defended Chris Rock. my world at least would have defended Chris Rock. Because we would have said this guy walked 20 meters, went, slapped you. People love Chris Rock precisely because he didn't retaliate. Okay, certain people, I agree. Yeah. I, for me, the people that were not agreeing may not have had as much to lose. Sure. For me, yeah. I see Chris Rock just a little bit lesser. Just a little bit taunty lesser. Go to for me. Mm. And I'm not alone. I'm definitely not alone. The, all the guys are calling Chris Rock a bitch. We all see him just a little bit lesser. He's an amazing comedian. Uh, uh, uh. But as a man, if that was my father. That's a lot of pressure to put on a man because what you're doing now is precisely what women do to all men. But no, if it's, my man can't step up, if he can't afford I'm, I'm this. Not, I'm, not asking, he, I'm not asking him to step up like that. I'm asking him to defend himself. That's at basic. But maybe the best way to defend himself is to walk away at the time. He stood and there. He's, and he's, he's maybe he, fighting he, back he's, now. He stood, maybe. Yeah. He stood there and he said, Crossman just slapped the shit out of me. 
is, you is know, he gaining that respect back for you? No. What he's done? No, now? no, no, no. Give, give, give me the certain things where, as you're talking about as a man, where you must be ready to, let's say, let's be extreme, die for. You know, someone is trying to... That's pride and ass- ego. That's fine. Someone's sexually assaulting your daughter, you know, and you willing to die for that. There's certain things that are non-negotiables. So for me, if someone is attacking me, mm. my non-negotiable is for me to try and defend myself. Even if you die? Yeah, because I'm a, even I, if your family I might loses die, everything, I'm, I mean, when you I'm, could have just kept quiet how, and moved. How do I know that Chris, that uh, Will Smith is gonna stop? How do I know? No, well, if he doesn't stop, because it was a slap and he walked away. But if he kept plowing in, maybe, maybe may, then maybe he was gonna Chris go bah, and then turn around and go uh, uh, bah, So I can't let it go because we don't know Chris Rock's threshold. Different people have different, different thresholds. Different people have different thresholds. Yeah. But for me, the moment someone attacks me, mm. uh, verbally. Physically, and you lose everything, and your kids that, can't go that, to school, that, and that's 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 okay. You don't I, care about I, all of that. I have a line. Yeah. I have a line. I think all human beings have that line sure. threshold. And for me, if you cross that line, sure, you know, if you're trying to tickle my booty hole, there's a line. Mm. Ne? And for me, I'm willing to lose everything, everything to protect my integrity. Is you that know? what Will Smith was trying to do in slapping Chris Rock? I don't Rock? know what Will Smith was trying to do. Maybe I, Chris Rock I, crossed the I, line. I, if that's what his line was. Ne? So you should respect Will. I love the fact that you said everybody has a different threshold. threshold. So maybe that was his threshold. So you respect Will. For no, I don't did. respect Will. You but know? he was defending Some, his family and Someone's his threshold is the fact that you mean mugging me. Ne? Mm. Me, my threshold mm. is if you are attacked, then you must retaliate. My threshold. And sure. anyone who is abiding by my threshold, mm. I will respect in that space, okay. you know. But I can respect that we have different thresholds. Uh, that's fine. We had a sit down with uh, La Vida Nota, the authority, and DJ oh. Smoo speaking about, <laughs> look, um, the, the, the protest, I believe, are still ongoing. The SRC president, Umnyaman, I forgot his name. Uh, I think Umnyaman is his surname, mm. has been suspended officially. At some point, the media was kicked out because their presence might incite violence, which doesn't make sense in the era of cell phones, yeah. students can record themselves. Sure. But the media was, was allowed back on. The protests are still happening at WITS. Financial exclusion. Fees must fall. The same stuff. But we had a conversation around universities, uh, school, privilege, mm. etc. What did you take of, of the whole thing? And you know? what, what a great chat. Um, what, a, what, a, what an amazing chat with amazing people. And again... When I know that, please, don't say too today. Yes, I want to talk about my comment. How can you take you guys seriously, man? Smoking happily. I saw that comment. And I was also like, I agree with you. They're so disgusting. I was like, people are just losers. You know, like... now we're, I also hate now, that they now were smoking happily. Now we must wear like happy. a shirt and tie so that you can take us seriously. I want to show Look, anyway, wear the shirt and tie. It's like, you know, listen to what we're saying. So, um, I love the chat. What was weird mm. was how people were engaging me. Hey, bruh, how can you talk to Unota? How do you take him seriously? People in your real life. People in real life. People in real life. And I was like, you do understand that everyone has pros and cons. Everybody yeah. has good things to say and bad things to say. Everybody can be amazingly insightful and annoying, you know? I was like, people in your life were criticizing you for, for sitting for on a sitting panel, on a panel. and engaging him cordially. I was they like, expect you to, maybe they've cancelled him. Which is fine. They expect you they, to they, buy they, scale they, him and also cancel him and not engage him. I was like, I, I, I don't get it. I'm willing, this, this been criticized for bringing him to as well. Yeah, and he told me that, you know. Um, and I was like, you do know that I'm willing to sit down and engage anyone sure. and have a conversation. And if there's things that I don't like, I'm happy to say, you know what, I actually don't like the fact that you wear black. Sure. I think wearing black is silly. I don't approve of it. You know, I love your beard. I think your beard. And that's how we should have these conversations as human beings. Mm-hmm. And understand, Uguti, people have strengths and weaknesses. People can talk absolute ass, yeah. but it, they can also be knowledgeable on certain topics. Sure. And who notice has got a lot of good knowledge. And I was sitting there and I was just like shocked. Did you sit? And, and I, look, I, I can't tell you how many people actually engaged me via DMs, via live chats yeah. like this. And I was like, I, I, I think you need to change how you view people yeah. you know if you've cancelled them i respect you sure whatever um i don't believe in that but you need to understand Uguti, everyone has both yeah you know but and it you was might interesting find, you might find in time that the people that nota has upset directly mm. end up forgiving him and mm. working with him and then you're left alone mm. having cancelled him when you don't even know him Ta-bang. You don't know the people that maybe he could have offended in certain ways. So yeah. I've got my own opinions and reservations about Nkamulo mm. Baloy. I respect his brain. I think he's, he's an amazing human being. 
I, I have huge frustrations, what you're saying about thresholds with when he does this thing of, of saying wild stuff that mm. literally harms people in real life. I mm. have huge issues with that. And I, I, my understanding of what DJ Spoo is doing is he's saying, I'm not going to cost you a way to build a monster because mm. you want to become a monster. Mm. I'm going to bring you close and hug you mm. and hold you accountable on camera mm. so that people can hear with no to no. So come among, no, no, talento is mm. wrong. Mm. Before we say, look, we tried and we failed. Mm. Let's not just chuck you away because mm. of, because normally when you do no, that, man, even like in as, your families, as, you as, create as a watching, monster. I was like, as a machita, uh, we, that was such an amazing panel. I was, I was again blessed to engage with you. You were like, oh, you and your brother, you guys hate each other. <laughs> okay. I saw that comment. <laughs> or, or, I, like, I don't think or I right. Penal likes his brother. And I was people like, on WhatsApp. I fucking people hate People on him. WhatsApp are like, I fucking hate him. Do you guys need to sort out your stuff with your brother. I was like, okay, so your family is perfect and you guys never argue or disagree on anything, you know? And I was like, I'm, I'm really hoping that what Usbu wants of us going to different university and campuses yeah. actually, you know, becomes something. And, and we actually get that opportunity to go into certain spaces because I appreciated engaging with some of the kids and hearing what they have to say. Obviously, a lot of things I didn't agree with, but there's things that I did agree with, yeah. you know? And if we can go to different campuses and different spaces and learn and engage and vibe and, you know, all those type of things and make people understand that it's okay to have robust intellectual discussions while sipping on a sure. beer and smoking hubby, you Shit. know? And we're professional, bro. One of the things you don't know, and this is why we can debate, argue, conversate, is because we sharpen each other yeah. and we go hard. You guys haven't even seen us go on camera. Yeah. One day when I'm like, fuck you, Dagi, when he says, fuck you, you'll see. Yeah. And right after that, we can laugh. That's, that's the beauty of siblings. Yeah. For those of you who have siblings, that's, that's who we are. But anyways, let's shut this thing down. Hi, brother. Your closing views for the week. Your thoughts um, to the squatters out there? Yeah, so guys, again, for me, this is just always an absolute privilege. Uh, please like my stuff as well. You know, I do a lot of uh, self-development stuff. So on my YouTube channel, it's all about a journey of discovery, yeah. a journey of just improving yourself in every way of learning, of teaching, of um, just becoming a better version of yourself. And yeah. that's my journey and it's a continuous journey. And every day, I'm just trying to become a better person. So please enjoy the dads and lads. We're I'm going to have a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a best and everyone who's going to be there. I hope no child finds themselves in danger. Well, they alone. We're thinking of all the families in Durban that mm. were in the accident. Everyone else who is struggling people going through load shedding, people that are trying to get a job, people that are hustling and trying to push their business. Guys, we love you, man. Again, shout out to the gents that are here. Utumi, Sia, Utabang. Guys, we love you. Slim, all the guys at Amped Studios in Newtown, Newtown Junction. Um, we love you guys. We appreciate you. It's the virtual Mkuku. It's the virtual Mkuku. Have a great week. We're looking forward to reading your comments. Cheers, we're out. Is that a cut? Welcome to the virtual Mkuku, Mkuku Wako Oluazi, the Mkuku of Education. Let's go.